Ja, hallo und herzlich willkommen, Profi-Foto-Podcast zum Erscheinen der Juli-August-Ausgabe 2014 im Heft wieder viele Portfolios, unter anderem von und mit Daniel Josefsohn. Ein Test der neuen Lumix Reha, vier neue Mittelformatmodelle von Phase One und Hasselblatt. Die derzeit innovativste Kamera für viele ist allerdings äh, von Lytro, die Illum Lichtfeld Fotografie Kamera, die dreidimensionale Bildräume erschafft, die nachträglich online interaktiv refokussiert oder dreidimensional betrachtet werden können. Was dahinter steckt, zeigen wir heute in unserem Podcast Juli August. Photography has always been a way to capture a moment that would otherwise be either ignored, lost or discarded. It's basically how I document the experiences I get to have and the experiences I get to share with other people. It's a career and a lifestyle. It's not something that you do from nine to five. It's something you do and live with every single day of your life. It's a way I can show my thoughts and emotions and create something that's meaningful to me. It fulfills every aspect of my life between printing and shooting and commercial work and artwork. It's everything. I was always kind of the live music photographer running around. That evolved into wanting to build and shoot portraits. My style of photography bounces between very honest emotion and almost surrealism. We've been together since about 2001, and at a certain point we just realized, hey, let's do this as a team. We mainly do fashion and portrait photography. Our style of photography is very, I think, artistic and very painterly. We like things to be beautiful. My style of photography is, the technical term or the academic term is called constructed photography. That whole handcrafted scratch build, it's, it's the most important thing to us. The dioramas are usually very somber, so a little bit of angst, a little bit of sadness, but then when you really start looking at them, there's a lot of humor actually ends up coming out. I shoot conceptual photography. The style is something that gradually develops. You have to kind of push yourself to create your own elements. I like to try to capture the way people think or what they're thinking within the photograph by using kind of like other worldly means while still having it based in reality. Photography is my life. I'm an action sports photographer and it's my favorite way of keeping me doing new things every day. The most important part to my process is to actually authentically be in the moment. It's more or less trying to get myself in the position of an experience somebody's having and portraying that emotion in the moment. For this project, we were asked to test out the new Lightro camera and portray five different emotions. I decided to bring a film noir, 50s sort of sensibility to the photo shoot. A style I thought would really allow me to push the look and complete the story. It meant that I really had to think through every aspect of the image. I seem to just move the car out. Yeah. Pull the car out a little bit, yeah. angle it this way and just get so low and get the concrete. Oh, I love this. Look at it. It's about finding the depth, pushing the composition to really give the viewer something to explore. I always wanted to be a filmmaker when I was a kid, so I figured photography was a good step. You can set stuff up, you can still tell a story within a single image, and that's what I love about it. Half of the things in the Lytro camera are things that I've never had to do in photography before. I'm trying to express the given emotions. I'm trying to be able to tell a story and have different points hidden. Pre-production is the most important. Figuring out what you want, drawing it out, figuring out what you'll need to get the photo. Once I have it all planned out, then I'll just go and shoot it. Yeah. Can we try a different hand pose? Can you keep your body angle like you're like yeah. reaching for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. I'm going to be using flour on the subject. I'm going to have it thrown and have it completely covering their body. When they move, it's going to drift off of them and kind of give this like broken look to it. So small zoom changes will actually affect, will affect the, the depth uh, more, more than you think. So it won't yeah. change the composition too much. Okay. But it will give you better depth. Can we do with 
want to? We didn't want to be literal when we were trying to come up with concepts for these emotions, so we wanted to be more conceptual, looking. more psychological than like literal. Could you have like a little bit, little bit bend in your arm, maybe? Yeah. Great. And you can just kind of like keep sort of like moving your arm like that. We made these very beautiful golden walls, backlit it very nicely, and we had a very you know lovely uh, Alexander McQueen gown. Nice dress action. With uh, some flowers in the foreground and we and just with uh, the model's angle of her body, her pose, the movement of the dress, the wind. The light, the positive energy. We try to keep the elements very simple but also very natural and very real. Okay, we're going to want to set it up. Let's do the fence. The animals are going to be pretty close, so let's put them here. Okay. When I work with my own personal work, when I'm shooting the 8x10 camera, I'm using one lens. It's a super wide angle lens, which basically I have to set the camera inside the scene. I'm a little strapped for space in my broken apartment, so the Lytro camera is interesting because I've always struggled with depth of field in my large format, and this camera is going to allow me to focus on the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, something I can't do with just one piece of film. How's the lighting? The white wall here is a little bit... A little bit bright. Do you want me to bring this light, this four light, down a little bit? I'm hoping no, that no, I've given so. something in almost every corner to look at. I do like to put a lot of well, details in the scenes. And we'll go from here. I took the camera through a lot of different push points, like I tried to stretch the capability of the camera. Because of what this camera is, my challenge with it is to use the different focus points. The action shot to me that's the most important is you not out yet, like that split second where you're like... Yeah, and trust me, I'm not going to be able to direct you that well because your mind's going to be somewhere else. I think we're about to get some unscripted, natural, organic, amazing reactions here. Ultimately, I'm trying to achieve a deeper storytelling with these images. I'd like the viewer of some of these images to not only feel like they're there, but to also feel like they can see what the person in my frame is seeing as well. Whenever you're ready. Learning how to use the new equipment to best tell that story the whole thing was a different experience. My own work challenges me with every new scene that I do, and to be presented this camera, a whole new set of challenges. It's interesting to be able to see this new technology and learn how to use it. The shoots would require extra planning to make sure that all those layers are in place. And once you get your shot and get your workflow, you can understand exactly where your focus needs to be. You have to think differently about how you're shooting have to be really conscious of everything around you and the story you're trying to tell. I just found myself adapting with more and more patience because I was so excited about what it could possibly do. It adds another layer to the way I'm able to tell stories. tell a story with a photo by it being an experience for the viewer. You kind of have to click around and explore it a bit in order to see what the emotion might be. With this camera, it's very nice. You don't have to switch lenses. Everything is right there. You can make your adjustments almost immediately. It'll be fascinating to see how people latch on to the technology. I hope I'm giving the viewer enough to look at. That's always been one of my major concerns, is giving them plenty to look at. And since they can focus on all these different levels, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for them. I 
was able to transform the environment and tell stories that I might not have been able to otherwise. You can see different elements that were hidden before and kind of discover your way through the photograph. It's not made to show up in a magazine. It's not made to see in 2D. It's made for an interactive experience. I think for us it's important that people get emotional connection to the image. It's definitely allowing the viewer to become more part of the scene. That's pretty rewarding. The Lytro camera definitely is giving a whole new element to photography. It's kind of exciting to know you have the possibility of trying something new and just furthering what you're capable of using your eye for. With the Lytro camera, photography really becomes alive, and that just opened up a whole new galaxy of possibilities. Ein spannendes Thema, dem wir unseren Podcast exklusiv widmen. Neu ist als Open Source die Software, die gebraucht wird, um Living Pictures uh, online einbinden zu können. Die Lightroom Illum soll im Sommer lieferbar sein. Unser nächster Podcast erscheint Ende August zur September-Ausgabe von Profifoto.